Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Civil War. This is Grand Tactician. Uh, now, I have not actually played any part of the game here. As you can see, I have literally just started the game up. Got a key here today to uh, go ahead and show you guys. Uh, look forward to it. There's obviously no pay here, so we'll see how things look. We'll give it a go. I do like the background, though. I do like that. So, I'm not tremendously aware of the game as such. It does remind me of Ultimate General, which is going to be quite nice. I do have a thing I always do like to play as the uh, CSA, because <laughs> I like to play the underdog. <laughs> uh, let's see here, then. I like how we have here, then. Okay, so morale. Spirit, size of armies. Number of ships, okay. AI is aggressive. Historic choose to free policies. I like that. Oh, uh, hello. The Old Dominion. It would be nice if that tooltip came up a little bit faster. Right. Actually, let's go ahead and double check. I think there's an option for that. Uh, tooltip appearance. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I do like me uh, some uh, good old tooltips. We'll go ahead and alter that setting there. Oh no, there we go. Low. That's why I want to do low. I was thinking, why is it taking longer? Right, there we go. Now it feels like a more modern game. <laughs> and to make sure Virginia will support the succession and eventually join the Confederacy, the Confederate capital has moved from Montgomery to Richmond. Support in Virginia is greatly increased. Okay, so I think we can choose up to three policies then. I'm going to assume these are the policies. I'm liking this so far. I like how we actually have uh, opportunities here to change things. So no bonus over here then. No bonus? Okay. Of course we're going to get used to this as we move on, as we get more familiar with the game. So we have the Kansas Slave State. Organized pro-slavery immigration and cross-border intrusion into Kansas Territory. Southern influence has increased and Kansas will become a slave state. That's really intriguing actually to see little things like that. I like that so far. Uh, slavery to the West. Encourage pro-slavery pioneers to settle in Arizona and New Mexico territories. Southern support has uh, increased considerably and recruitment in New, Ma uh, New Mexico is allowed. That's interesting. Apostles of Disunion. Uh, official supporters of the uh, pro-slavery fire eaters will greatly increase Southern support in all slave states, but will also increase Northern support in all free states. Uh, that's kind of interesting, actually. What do we have here? Philobustrin. Provide support to Southern incursions to use Latin America. Southern military experience has increased. Nicaragua and Cuba will be under Southern control. Increase in trade and allow recruitment. Wow, that's really interesting, actually. Huh. We have King Cotton over here. Uh, support in agricultural upgrade all plantations. Increase in support in Southern states and improve relations with Europe. Intriguing. Industrialization. Uh, southern industrialization. All heavy industries will start the campaign with higher upgrade level. Confederacy will start the campaign with more rail lines built and population uh, is increased in the southern state considerably. Oh my god, that is... Okay, I'm intrigued now. Arms agents. Organized movements of weapons to southern armies and forts. Amount of weapons available to the Confederacy is doubled and Springfield weapon types become available for production to southern industry. I'm liking that, I'm liking that. I'm liking these options here, actually. Some really... Uh, very, very interesting options. So we have Alliance of the Natives. Approach the Native Americans to ally with them against the Northern oppressors. It's possible to increase Confederate support in Indian territories considerably, allow recruitment uh, from the Indian tribes living there. And then we do have Southern Pan Pacific, or Southern Pacific, sorry. I uh, support the construction of Southern Pacific Railroad connecting the Atlantic and Pacific coasts, increasing trade with the Western states. The game will start with the Southern Pacific Railroad built and uh, the Confederacy controlling parts of trade to the Pacific coast. That's really, really interesting, actually. What does this mean with historic men? Oh, I see. So, um, historic men is the Old Dominion, King Cotton, and the Native Allies. But I can actually choose different things here then to actually uh, change the actual look of the game. Well, uh, to change how the campaign. I'm real. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. I'm pretty interested so far. Then. Hmm. 
I think what we'll do then to begin with is actually go for the historic game, and then at least we actually get to appreciate the differences that you can actually achieve here. So, the road to, road to war. February 23rd, 1861, a house divided. The Union has dissolved. The troubled and quarrelsome Union between the Northern Free States and the Southern Slave States did not survive the election of openly anti-slavery Republic Republican Abraham Lincoln. And since the Compromise of 1850, which prevented succession, secession and disunion, the question over the future of slavery in the United States has divided the nation. On December 20th, 1860, the Fragile Union broke apart, with South Carolina seceding, six other Deep South slave states followed with the Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, and Louisiana ceding in January 1861, and the state of Texas in February 1861. Things have moved fast since. In the seceded states, U.S. property is seized by state officials, officials, with even the armories and fortifications changing hands. Only four forts remain in the U.S. Army control, three of them in Florida. Hmm. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and get into this, but I'm, I'm enjoying this so far. So we'll start a new campaign, then. I like the images here, actually. That's very nice. That's actually really quite impressive to have coloured images. I know it sounds like really daft and like really like, well, of course, but it does add like a nice touch. It sets the tone there. During the 1850s, cotton com uh, demand in Europe skyrockets. Yeah, especially in, uh, <laughs> in the UK. Especially a hard hit was Lancashire. Did not do wonders. Did not do wonders. Oh, this is definitely going to be copyrighted as hell. <laughs> a house divided against itself cannot stand. I believe this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. Abraham Lincoln, June 16, 1858. Chapter 1. A House Divided. Hmm. The American Civil War. Thousands upon thousands of Americans turned against one another. Brothers killing brothers. The bloodiest war America would see. I mean, in all honesty, this is like sort of uh, History Channel <laughs> production. The young nation in a maelstrom. Which is like complementary to the game here. It reminds me of like old documentaries, apart. which is really quite good. I like that. Okay. The Americans are no strangers to war. Now, I do feel like I'm watching a documentary. This is interesting. Declaring independence from their colonial masters, they fought long and hard for their freedom. true that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Definitely quite the uh, French influence there, right? And the pursuit of happiness. But in this pursuit, where the Americans have a divine destiny to establish on earth the moral dignity and salvation of man, War would be ever present. Hmm. Fulfilling the manifest destiny. I mean, this is it. It's an interesting uh, aspect of the game here, but I did not expect. I mean, it's very useful for someone like me, obviously, not being uh, brought up with obviously uh, the U.S. mythology, the U.S. history, of course. 
no idea to the quality of the uh, uh, teaching of history in, in the US, of course. But here in the UK, yeah. <laughs> For when or if it's ever covered, it, it is extremely, extremely black and white. So I do appreciate this. I do appreciate this. Well, and that's a beautiful picture there. Connect the East Coast and Midwest, followed by railroads and telegraph wires only decades later, revolutionizing the flow of merchandise, news, and people. Such a beautiful nation. But not all became Americans voluntarily. men owned by other men labor in shackles to feed an insatiable need for cotton and textile mills bringing marvelous riches to some and comfortless lives to others these tired poor huddled masses yearn to breathe free too but instead are subject to crack of the whip equality and happiness even life are not reserved for all. Coming to mid-19th century, the ever-expanding nation is on a brink of rupture. Only a political compromise of 1850 diffuses the tensions between northern free states and southern slave states. But this merely delays the march on the road to the inevitable. I do not expect the house to fall. But I do expect it will cease to be divided. It will become all one thing. Or all the other. Actually, genuinely intrigued by, uh, was this a documentary that was like made prior? Did they have the this actually produced for the game? I mean, this is actually really, uh, really high quality. Soon. And I can't attest a lot, obviously, uh, to the arguments presented here. I don't obviously have, like, a degree in uh, American Civil War history. I'd like to think, but it's actually well-researched, well-presented. It's definitely well-presented. Never thought I'd commentate on, like, a, a documentary. This is strange. Oh, there we go. We have a game. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Field book. Uh, field book over here. Well, that took quite a long time, actually, but that was well worthwhile. I was enjoying that. Uh, welcome to Grand Tactician, 1861 to 1865. In this field book, you will find a quick guide to learn how the campaign gameplay works. A browser guide topics on the left side by clicking on the headlines. Uh, this will open the information on the page describing the topic in detail. You can close the field book at any time by clicking the eye. I'm going to have to work in like some sort of like American accent. I do love the US. Uh, it would be lovely to live there one day, actually. I just do find myself like kind of, kind of like being attracted towards like the, the mountainous areas. Is it, uh, is it Colorado? We do have uh, the mountains there. They, they do seem rather attractive. Um, hmm. So field book over here then. Yep. Campaign UI. So main buttons and balance. Oh, I love a good resource. <laughs> oh, I'm excited already, actually. I really do like games. If this game actually has, like, a significant uh, strategic, like, layer, I'm going to be very happy. I don't know if the game is multiplayer, actually. That's something I haven't checked. I've, it's one of these things. I've been aware of the game to a degree, but I've kept myself um, purposely in the dark about it. I know somebody who's really excited who's a historical gamer. I know who's going to be, like, he's going to be loving it right now. 
And the campaign runs in real time. Time controls are found in the bottom right panel. Orders can be issued when the game is paused. The game automatically pauses certain events such as news or engagements. Okay. So first steps then. In Grand Tactician, you will take a role in the Prisoner's War Cabinet, including the War Department. You are in charge of the nation's war effort and the military. You will also influence government decision making. For the specific mechanics of each campaign scenario, see the campaign description below. Regardless of which campaign you select, it's advice to always start the campaign by checking the strategic situation objectives. See chapters 2 to 3 in the fieldbook. Following this, it is advised that you check and set the government funding and policies. This may be left. Okay, I'm actually pretty intrigued then. So how do I get this uh, back up if I want to then? Ah, uh, right, okay, over here. Ryan, how do we close this? Do I, I go like that, okay. Uh, so we have America divided here. This is a newspaper, the Grand Herald, the Illustrated Grand Herald. So President Buchanan, unable to solve the crisis, Jefferson Davis to lead the Confederacy, uh, Texas votes, 8-1 to, to secede. Interesting. Now, do I... Let's see, I'm trying to figure out how we... Uh... Ah, right, so we have here W, A, S, and D. How does one remove this, then? So, map information, then. We have this over here. Is, is this... Um... Right. Interesting. I do wonder how you remove that. We'll learn things as we go on here. Let's see, strategy. How does one remove this? <laughs> there must be like some sort of... Uh, let's see, if I go to real time. Okay, so time passed. Oh, there we go. We right-click it. There we go. That's good to know. Right, let's take a look at the actual game then. Uh, I do like the map. I like something like this. Uh, something like this does generally work out quite well. Uh, but let's see, if we zoom in... Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, hello there. Oh, yes. I like that. I very much do like that. I'll get a little bit of a performance drop here, in all honesty. Uh, but of course, I recorded this, so it's probably uh, placed a little bit of extra strain on the system. Uh, but I, I could honestly do look at the actual uh, graphical settings and sort things out there. So let's take a look. Map information. Supply lines. Right. I do like this. This is really cool. Could probably do having like the font a little bit larger there. That'd be a little bit nicer read, or maybe I'd make it a colour that stands out a little bit more. Uh, so we have the Fort St. Philip Garrison there. <sighs> I like this. This is cool. Okay, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I'm going to keep saying that, but I'm actually pretty impressed so far. This is like, I really like games like this. Right, map board as we have that on, can turn that off then. Map text, we can have that on and off. Uh, command and control. So that's what I had there. So I can click over here. Excellent. Okay. Movement arrows. Telegraph lines. I like how we can actually have the state boundaries there, that's nice. Okay, I'm very intrigued actually, this is really quite nice. I like how we can actually take a look- oh wow! Oh hello! Uh, the game, by the way, is in beta, do remember that. So, <laughs> I've been a little bit hard on the game by talking about performance. Uh, I'd like to make the UI a little bit larger, though. I wonder if we can. Hmm. Sort of appearance. Feud is interesting. Right, let's see. Yeah, it would be nice if I had an option to make the UI a little bit larger, so that's probably something that could be improved there. Um, maybe there's a setting somewhere. 
not seen it as of yet. But it might be something we could potentially mod then. So let's take a look, Ben. So what do we actually have here, Ben? So February 24th, 1861. Is this our capital over here? I think it might be. That looks to be manpower. Yeah, I'd like the UI to be a little bit larger. We do have time going by here, and I do not want that to happen. So things are happening here. Yeah, the UI being a little bit larger would be really quite nice. Just just a bit larger would definitely help out significantly. Hmm. Okay, let's see then. So, I wonder what this actually is. Uh, so, this is a federal major advantage, okay. Oh, so this is what they have. at uh, The victory bar. So, obviously, the federals do have the advantage right now. So, let's see here then. We have our commander-in-chief and we have objectives. Uh, break union morale. Uh, to win the campaign. Break Union National Morale below 25 will force them to seek for peace and you will win the campaign. So, I like this. The National Morale of the United States of America is 85. The Confederate States is here at 100. Obviously, we have just recently seceded. Uh, obviously, we do have a strong belief in ourselves. National Support. Morale of Armies. Loyal States there. So, we have 12. The US has 29. Uh, men fielded, we have... I'm going to assume that is, like, more than that. 1,361, you might be able to, like, times that by a certain number, and that gives you, like, the actual number there. Like, one might be, like, 100, or one might be, like, 1,000 or something. Uh, naval tonnage, then. Also, we do significantly like their military experience. Battle won. Uh, battle w battles won. Total European casualties. Uh, European la uh, relations. We do have really good relations with European powers. That would have to be something we'd have to absolutely focus upon. Uh, so let's see here, then. War of Independence. A compilation of the official records. New Mexico Territory joins the Confederacy. Alexander? Uh, Alexandria is captured by federal troops over here. That's good that we can actually go to that immediately. So Alexandria. Ah, I see over here then. Right, okay. A little bit of performance issues. Let's go ahead and turn the graphics down a bit then. Um, oh, yes, you can see that then. And we'll go for about midway then. The game still looks good. It reminds me very much of um, <laughs> Shogun Tall War, actually. Uh, so we do have over here, so this is Fort Washington. And we do have Alexandria over here. Hi, Uncle. Right, okay. We do have Washington, D.C. over here. A very nice position there. Right, Winchester over here then. Let's take a look. So we have the military panel over here. So we have armies. Um, Fort Morgan Garrison. Okay. Oh, that's interesting, then. Commander. Let's see. Uh, what I want to take a look at, then, is the field armies. Do I not have any field armies right now? We do have a number of garrisons. We might not actually have any forces raised in the field as of yet, which is interesting. Obviously, I should have been doing the tutorial, but I thought I'd just actually take a look at this. Let's see. It's not my size. It'd be nice to see them all. Order of battle. Let's see. Units. Right, there we go. Uh, ranking. Size. Hmm. I do wonder if this is how long they are. It's interesting. There's a lot of stuff over here. A lot of things over here that I do need to take a look at. Uh, we do have the ability to raise a new army. I just saw a button for that. Uh, so we have ships in harbour here. Oh, look at that. So we have the CSS Columbus ship of the line there. 10%. I wonder if that's her, her uh, readiness right now. New fleet. Interesting. Oh, we do have our main weapon over here then. Interesting. Now we still have that unit selected there. So we can take a look at our officers over here then. So we have uh, Joseph E. Johnson. Interesting. So this is the rank of Brigadier General. We have Colonel here, Lieutenant Colonel Major. Interesting, I'm liking it. Veteran over here. Oh, I like that. Rising Star. I kind of wish you could have the UI come up a bit sooner. Like It's, it's a little bit too delayed in my opinion. Uh, but that's something that can definitely be sorted out in the future. Right, so that's pretty interesting. Then. So we do have finances. This is what I'm especially, uh, especially interested in. 
And so we do have tariffs over here for our revenue. We have sale taxes, we have income tax. Well, we don't have income tax, we don't have a corporate tax. Uh, land sales, total revenue, the revenue is plus 26,000. Administration there, subsidies, interest, army upkeep is obviously quite expensive. Uh, administration, very expensive, of course. Naval upkeep, recruitment, total expenses. So we do have a surplus over here, but this is also management of finances. I like, I very much like the fact that this can actually be controlled manually. I think I'm going to have to spend quite a bit of time with this game actually just to figure out how to actually play and really what we can do here. Let's see, can I, right okay, so I can actually change that if I would so wish to do so. That's interesting. It does make me wonder what you could do there. Uh, so politics, two additional policies there. Uh, so if we actually put that up, yeah we can have additional policies which is interesting. We'll have to take a look at the policies there. Diplomacy, obviously there's a real cost of that. I like that, I'm liking it quite a lot here actually. I'm liking it quite a lot. Um, let's see, if I click on diplomacy, it doesn't come up here. If I go economy, then is expansion. That is the current economic cycle, it seems. Okay. Wealth is high income. Okay. Unemployment there. Obviously, we could reduce unemployment by <laughs> recruiting. <laughs> That's always a good way. Uh, we do have a really excellent credit rate, which is interesting. That is interesting. Right, I'm actually rather, rather intrigued. Definitely more here than meets the eye. So we do have policies. Oh, wow. And this is actually uh, set up into chapters here. Demon of War. A war so terrible. And nothing but tombs. Wow. And this could be automatically managed. Let's take a look at what we have here then. So I have use policies then. We have a government funding. We also do begin here with King Cotton, which is good for us. I don't know whether you begin with that normally. Perhaps not. We have industrialization over here then, which I imagine we'd have to research. Uh, Arming of civilian ships. We have the military here. Diplomacy. We have dim uh, diplomatic focus in policy making. Uh, boosting relations with European superpowers. Uh, with further subsidies is made possible. This policy also allows imports of Enfield rifles. I like how you actually get very real benefits there. Okay. So, government funding, then. Uh, fund of the war effort. Uh, new acts for fund of the war effort are made available. Improved credit rate allows low interest rates on new loans. So, print notes, tariffs act, uh, the uh, print notes to the... We do have King Cotton too. Right. Allows building and upgrades of cotton clad ram chips. I like that. Cotton clad sounds amazing. Industrialization is very interesting. I mean this is very, very interesting because we can't we can't outdo the US in terms of industry. It's very cool, but you can actually have the ability to have like uh, improved industry from the outset. So that's pretty cool. Uh, letters of Marquis. Right. Right, but that would actually see our relations suffer there. Uh, diplomacy. Oh, right, I see. So we actually have here then. Um, so that would allow for the uh, import of Enfield rivals. Uh, diplomacy 2 allows for the import of uh, Enfield musketoons. I'm not entirely sure what that is, actually, so I'd have to look that up. And uh, we do have diplomacy free here. And this would allow the import of six-pounder Whitworth rifle and an ironclad turret chip. That's very powerful there, actually. Very powerful. So how do we do this, then? Use policies. What does it cost us, then? I imagine it will change the cost there. Let's see. Industry. So I've used a policy. Right, I'm going to cancel that policy there. Um, so we only have so many policies. So imagine that's a cost of one, that's two, that's three. So that's that's high cost there. But I think really, um, I think we do need to do it. It looks like we actually have that one. So we have the Militia Act. I think I'd like to try and focus upon the, um, let's see, military. They also offer reorganization of nations, military increase in military capabilities, free trade act, led to the marquee. Uh, I'm going to go for that then. 
I mean, if we take a look, one, two, four, five, six, seven. I think we do focus upon the diplomatic angle there. That might give us an opportunity. I mean, this is it. Like, we can't beat the United States alone. Oh, wow. This is intriguing, man. And so we do have here production. Let's take a look, then. So if I was to take a look over here, then we can actually see the production by uh, Great Britain. We do have Spain over here. And like I said, right, so we have Spain, France, and Mexico as foreign powers. Interesting. The Union. Uh, taking a while to load. <laughs> I can imagine quite high. How does that compare when you have them both on? Or can you only have one filter? No, of course you can have multiple filters. I do wonder how this works. Hmm. What does it uh, does it just go down to uh, union production? I would imagine so. Right, well that's intriguing then. So value production here, efficiency, workforce, profits, corporate tax, building level one. Uh, obviously if we had a, a large industry from the outside, that'd be very good. Oh, we can actually, uh, I didn't know we could do that. Cool. Right, we also do have goods and trade up here. There's a lot to take in here. This is actually really quite fascinating. Uh, so exports. Hmm. Oh, I like that. So we actually do have to have the prerequisites over here then. Uh, so we have to have... Let's see, that's cotton there. So we need to have nitre and... I'm not seeing the other one. I do wonder if that's like... Coal? I can't quite... Iron. Oh, right. No, that's the... Right. Uh, we need to have gunpowder. Where's gunpowder? Do we not produce gunpowder? Potentially we don't produce gunpowder. We should produce gunpowder somewhere. Or oh, maybe we have to actually... Oh, yes, we do have gunpowder production here. Now, I wonder where we actually produce said gunpowder. That's really interesting. So let's go back over here, then. So this is our production. This is our goods and trade. Uh, do we produce gunpowder? So we have brickworks, foundries, lumber mills, farms, ironworks, and factories. Let's see. Uh, no foundries, no... We have a bricks work over here. We have lumber mills. We have... Oh, wow, there's more here. Oh. Interesting. Farms, of course. Oh, there are more power zone. Oh, no. Uh, Spain, Mexico, sea trade, uh, non-war states. That's interesting. I do wonder what that means. Oh, that means, like, neutral states. That's interesting. I'm liking it. Okay, that's very, very interesting. We'd have to really get a sense of what we produce, what we don't produce, what we need more of, and go from there. So... Let's take a look then. So I'm pretty intrigued then so far. Pretty damn intrigued. Yeah, uh, performance is definitely better by reducing that. So I can... That's nice, I've been able to do it like that. I mean, imagine if you're playing with Union, you'd... <laughs> you'd look like that. <laughs> Maybe. Probably not. Right, okay. So we have our armies over here then. Essentially, all we have right now are the garrisons. Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Liking that. Battleground states. Nice. Nice. <laughs> I'm liking it. Okay. Intelligence. Interesting. Workforce. Oh, wow. That is actually really impressive there. Slavery. Hmm. Trade and supply. Support. Okay. Oh, so that looks to be Mexico down here. Right, the Bahamas. I'm going to assume that is uh, the British. One would assume. I like how it actually tells you here on the map. That's really nice. Railroads, common roads, bridges, ferries, canals, cities, towns, Indian settlements. 
military symbols, harbors, ports, depots, fleets, battlefield locations, armies. Oh, I see. Huh. That's really nice. They did a fantastic job. Right, let's see then. So, as far as things go right now, we don't have any fueled armies. I imagine this is because the war has only re just really just begun. So it does make me wonder what will happen now. I can actually see the temperature over here. That's really impressive. Support. Uh, South Carolina. Oh, wow. I like that. Is that because I still have support selected? It is, isn't it? Front lines. Interesting. Intelligence. Right, okay. I'm liking that. I am very much liking that. So, let's go ahead, Ben. Now, figuring out what our industry is going to be a very good idea. Where is our industry? Right, so we have farms here. You know what? It reminds me of a game called, like, Seven Years of War. And that was one that I always wanted to actually learn how to play, but I never quite uh, got into it as such. So, we do have the plantations over here, but that's interesting. Right, okay. Whoa. As we have Fort Sumter over here, then. So. These are men here. Let's see. Weight and all is deficient. Uh, intelligence is poor. Condition is good. They're untrained, however. Right, okay. 76 men there. That is a Union-held fort there. We do have Charleston over here. Oh, no, that is actually a Confederate fort over here, then. Okay. Uh, so let's see, then. I'm somewhat tempted to see what happens if we just allow time to pass by. And can I click onto Charleston? Let's see. Can I click Charleston? What does that do for me? Does it do anything for me? Is it not represented by that? And so we have Charleston Harbour over here. Right, okay. It must be that I have to go into other settings to be able to see that. Uh, we do have railroad capacity over here. Fascinating riverine transportation. We have sea capacity here. Uh, one would imagine this is manpower. Yeah, let's see here. If I hover over this. Saw something then. Hmm. Oh, I see, so I've got to zoom in. Let's see. Of course, still in the debate stage here, so it seems to be a, a certain level of zoom does actually give you that information. But this is really quite fascinating, actually. Really quite fascinating. I'm liking it so far. Right, okay. So, I think what we'll do then is actually allow some time to pass by, and we'll get a feel for the actual campaign then. And I think we'll go like that. Let's see. Turn bows off for the time being. Telegraphs I can turn off for the moment. Supply lines, I'm not entirely sure what they look like as of yet. Uh, I'm sure we'll see when we actually have armies in the field. So what we're going to do then is we're going to have time tick on by and we'll see what happens here then. I mean, this is by the minute, which is interesting. I really do want to just observe what happens right now. Let's see. Not much time has passed here. I mean, that's, that's the thing, isn't it? So if I speed this up. Right, 10 times speed. I mean, you can imagine fighting this every single day is going to be really quite fascinating. As we have ferries over here, then that's nice. Right, okay. It would be nice to see locomotives actually on these rail lines. <laughs> um, there's so much that they can do with this. Okay, let's get a sense of what we need to do here. So, a grand uh, telegraph company over here. Let's see. Ten thousand bonds there. Ten thousand US. Uh, sorry, ten thousand dollar bonds there. Yeah, I wish I could make the UI a little bit larger. That's my one uh, issue right now. So this is quite interesting. You're going to have to have like a good, uh, good idea of what to do here. Then let's go ahead and take a look back here. Then bring this back up. First steps. And grand tactician will take on. Yes. Okay. Right, 
Right, I see. And once you are familiar with the situation of the military, it's time to get planned for victory in the war. So we're going to go ahead and do this. Let's take a look at the first, uh, yes, of 1861. Uh, so 1861 campaign. This scenario starts before the hostility, uh, hostilities, his, uh, hostilities open. The United States is in a uh, turmoil, is in turmoil. Abraham Lincoln has been elected president and seven, uh, seven states have declared succession from the Union to form the Confederate States of America. Some U.S. garrisons have uh, not abandoned their posts or surrendered in these seceded states. A confrontation is inevitable. So far, the governments have not made the militia call uh, to mobilize and form their provisional armies as a preparation for war. Uh, prior to the militia call, both sides can muster state militias, however. These small units cannot be moved yet. They will serve as the seeds of the provisional army when the government decides to act. Only the United States has an active navy fleet, the Home Squadron. Both sides can begin the construction of new ships, but the, uh, but the forming of new fleets and naval operations will only be, uh, become available after hostilities begin. The militias uh, can be activated as an act in policy panel. The militia call will be seen as hostile act by the other nation and will escalate the situation. Oh, that's really quite fascinating, Ben. So can you possibly have a situation? It'd be really fascinating if you could have a, a, a situation um, where the war started later or, um, I don't know, would the war not begin at all in certain conditions? It's really quite interesting here. Right. While the CSA militia will, uh, call will not stir up a war, it will greatly increase the support for war in the north. If the president of the U.S. makes these militia call, depending on the level of support, uh, further slave states may succeed triggering the war. Thus, if the U.S. is the first to call this militia, it is seen as a declaration of war by the slave states, and the support for the Union will dramatically reduced, and be dramatically reduced. With the militia call, the number of volunteers will increase considerably, allowing for further recruitment and larger unit sizes. When the war erupts, restrictions on the use of the military are removed. I like this! I love this approach! I love, love this approach! This is actually really fascinating. I don't think I know many games where they actually have you uh, have you before the war. That's really interesting. So we have the 1862 campaign here. As you can see, things are obviously heating up there. Uh, yes, this is still early access, by the way. But I'm really looking forward to this. This is going to be quite fascinating. Winning. Objectives. Right, finances, policies. We have the economy over here. We're going to have to go through a lot of this, actually. Uh, I'm looking forward to this. I'm going to have to spend some time, actually, to learn how to play the game. Uh, but it definitely seems like a really good game so far. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. So diplomacy here. Uh, diplomacy and grant acquisition is handled via policies, acts, and subsidies. The diplomats will follow the guidelines given to them. This will uh, then improve or reduce their relations with European powers. Hmm. With uh, diplomacy policies, players can negotiate trade deals with Europeans. These deals include the possibility of importing European weapons, rifle guns, and ships. The uh, policies also allow more influence in the relations via further subsidies. The Confederacy strives for sufficient diplomatic relations with the Europeans to make intervention possible. And two things in their favour are they are uh, a major cotton producer of the world, uh, but they are the sworn enemy of the United States, a uh, rival of European superpowers globally. For the Union, good diplomatic relations will make sure the Europeans stay neutral in the American affairs. Uh, British and or French support for the Confederacy would make uh, victory for Lincoln more difficult to achieve. You can, oh man, that'd be, that'd be really impressive. I'd love to be able to actually try and achieve that intervention. That would, would really be cool. Right. This is so cool. <laughs> it's actually quite interesting. Uh, so, it puts us in a, in a very interesting position then. So, uh, hostilities, uh, hostilities, uh, <laughs> hostilities have not yet actually opened up, and I like that. I really do like that. I'm actually, yeah, right, I'm actually really impressed so far. I would like more games to be like this. I love when you actually zoom out, and I like that music. It's going to be so copyrighted, but it's going to be worth it. I can see why historical game was in, uh, <laughs> very much looking forward to this. And uh, da, 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 let's fuck with the Union. Right, let's see then. So what we'd have to do then is address the actual strategic situation of the Confederacy. We know that we are going to have far less in the, far less in the way of manpower. We do not have anywhere near a uh, as large of a navy. We still have a fleet, but we don't have a large as large of a fleet. So then that dictates our strategy there. 
Uh, let's see then. So do you have the CSS Columbus over here? Delaware. Confederate States. Columbia. Right, okay. 74 guns, 74 guns. Uh, delete ship. I don't know why I'd want to do that. Create new fleets. I can't do that as of yet. Uh, as it said, but that's interesting. Port level. Uh, wharf capacity supply. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Right, let's see. So we do have the Gosport shipyard over here. Level 3 there. Uh, 5,000 tons. Now, that's interesting then. If I was to go to raise armies. So. We have a number of volunteers here. Order of battle. So I don't think we actually have a proper order of battle as of yet. Let's just go back to our policies then. I mean, this is interesting then, so we could actually try to push towards that uh, intervention. Let's go ahead and read about the actual intervention then. Uh, sorry about policies. Da -da -da. Right. Open policy panel to influence the domestic and international politics of your nation. Uh, the tree shown is divided into five vertical policy branches. Funding agriculture, industrialization, uh, military diplomacy. Each branch has three defined policy levels, which need to be activated one at a time. Acts are one-time uh, political decisions, uh, most of which require one or more policies to be available. See the tooltip. Okay. Uh, policies can be cancelled. Acts cannot. Activate a policy. Right. Okay. When a policy or act is available for activation, it shows a red spy glass icon. At any one time, you are limited to the number of policies you can have active. Uh, the limit is shown in the top left corner of the panel. The number of available policies available depends on the uh, campaign chapter and the subsidies diverted into policy making. Policies and acts will take some time to be agreed upon by the politicians. Once you activate uh, an or uh, once you activate an available policy slash act, a green hourglass wool uh, slash icon uh, and its progress are shown. Once it is ready, you will see a blue tick icon. Right. Huh. Uh, you may leave the politics of the AI altogether. I'm liking that. That's pretty interesting. Then. So do you have transportation? We have. Right. Okay. The economy. Uh, the production of privately owned industries and trade from the backbone or form the backbone of your economy and grand tactician. Industries are created or go bankrupt automatically. This does not need any input from the player. The player can influence the economy via the government tax, collection, subsidies, and policy. The economy is based on production chains and supply and demand. The industries present on the map are not individual companies, but complexes. Industries require a workforce, some production requires certain pretty goods. An example like smelt and pig iron in a foundry requires iron ore from an iron mine and fuel. Note, with coal from a coal mine, the production is more effective than the use of charcoal. Uh, in slave states, production costs are much cheaper as a number of the required workforce are slaves. The larger the ratio of slaves to workers, interesting, and the simpler the production type. Ah. That's interesting then. Uh, in the campaign, you can browse all the industries and their current situation by opening the production panel. You can filter and sort the information using the tools on the right. The trade panel shows the supply and demand information per good time. Using the two economy, uh, econ ec economy panels, you can get an idea of the status of your own economy and that of your enemy. Okay. Uh, you can attack the enemy's economy by blockading their ports or raiding their production facilities and infrastructure. Uh, if demand cannot be met with production and imports are not sufficient to fill the void, then the prices will slowly start to increase. Higher prices will make the military upkeep more expensive and civilian population less wealthy. Civilians need wealth to set up new businesses. Oh, that's amazing. I like that. You can, can you imagine? Like, actually imagine this, guys. Imagine playing as, like, let's say, the North. You don't even need to go to war, essentially. You could try to just economically ruin the South. I mean, of course, it'd be far more effective to actually blockade them. And even, well, I, I don't think about to fight a war solely by economics. Uh, but you could actually really cause a lot of problems. And that's really fascinating. I do like that. 
Ooh, what do we have here? Oh, we see the squadron out here. Home squadron. Chugga, 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 chugga. Nice. I like that. Right, okay. Give me that music. <laughs> I love when you like zoom right out and gives you that. Gonna click on things, see what we can come up with. Hmm. Unemployment, national debt. So the Union has a greater level of national debt. Hmm. Our credit rating is good. I think. Seems like the Union's credit rating has decreased here. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> That's so strong. Right, administration. I mean, obviously the union has a larger amount of interest to pay, but they can actually pay it significantly better than we can. I mean, that could be something that would be rather interesting to look at, to try and try and pay off the loans. And this is a difficulty if we have loans, but we need loans to actually survive. Hmm. Ba -bam, ba -bam, ba -bam. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm liking that so far. We'd have to take a look at this to see how it actually functions here. Uh, trade war. Increase efficiency of blockades or blockade running. Uh, I mean, this is it, do I? Because that's a lot of money there. I mean, it's very interesting. It's like we do have to try and disrupt the union's economy because if we don't, then, well, they're going to disrupt ours. <sighs> I don't have the uh, navy to protect our, our commerce as such. We'd have to really rely upon, uh, essentially, hmm, foreign relations and setting up deals with foreign powers, really. As a recruitment there, civil order, very high. How does civil order work here? Uh, loss of state support reduced, negative effects of recruitment and drafts reduced, enemy intelligence and gathering reduced. Uh, recruitment over here. Increased availability of volunteers and draft. Trade wall. Uh, increased efficiency of blockades or blockade running. Yeah, blockade running is it. Okay, that makes sense. And transportation. Re uh, reduction of transports, uh, upkeep costs, increased trade flow, increased infrastructure construction repair. I mean, we're not spending anything on... Uh, Infrastructure right now, you can see just how expensive that is. Agriculture. That's intriguing. As we could have two additional policies here, but if I increase our spending. Ah, right, okay. Right, so I think that one is already active. Oh no, it's already active. Okay, so do not cancel it. These ones are already active. Uh, these ones have been worked on. That one's already active, I believe. So the one that's not active right now is King Cotton, and uh, the government funding. Let's see, then government funding one. So that, that does make sense then. We'll have to take a look at things, because we can actually cancel things if we like. Okay, production. Uh, interesting. Now, there's definitely a lot here to take a look at. Hmm. I think what we're going to do then is we are going to go ahead and call it here, just for the time being. The reason being, uh, this is it's like a nice little look at the game here. We'll see if there's anything else we can take a look at. So I'm going to have to go away, like, learn how to actually play the game through tutorials and then give you guys, like, a proper, <laughs> a proper view of the game. 
And let's see, what do we have here? Continue scenario, start campaign, start historical battle, tutorials. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual battles then, perhaps. We'll have a look, we'll see what it'll look like, and then uh, potentially we'll do that in the future. But I'm really quite intrigued by the, uh, well, strategic element there. So, we have the first Manassas campaign, Wilson's Creek. Wow. <laughs> That's quite one sided there for the Confederacy. <laughs> but numbers don't make everything. Right, after Fort Sumter and Charleston Harbor is captured by South Carolina uh, military forces on April 14th, 1861, President Abraham Lincoln called for 75,000 volunteers with a 90 day enlistment to quell the rebellion. That's interesting. Uh, we'll play as the Confederacy for the time being. We're just going to go ahead and take a look at what the game looks like, really. Let's see then. Uh, General Patterson, who had been at Bunker Hill since Monday, seems to have moved yesterday to Charleston, uh, 23 miles to the east of Winchester. Unless he prevents it, we shall move towards General Beauregard uh, today. I leave General Carlson here with two brigades of Virginia militia. We've orders to fall back if the enemy should appear in force, or approach in force, I should say. Uh, we do see General McDowell's army has continued its movement from central, centra, centra, Centerville uh, along Warrington Turnpike, uh, with heads or we're head of column side to beyond Stone Bridge. Evans Brigade will hold the left flank at Stone Bridge with uh, Cook uh, in the centre holding Lewis Balls and Island Falls. Uh, the rest of the army will continue to uh, continue preparations to attack McDowell's left flank from Blackburn's Ford, where Longstreet repelled the Union demonstrations. All reinforcement ammunition supplies are to be moved hastily to Manassas. Uh, junction to strengthen the combined armies. Okay, interesting. Alright, let's see. Can I get remote? So that's from headquarters then. Oh, I like this. Like this, like this, like this. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> Liking it. Oh, this very much reminds me of a... Oh, God, what is it now? I can't think of the game it reminds me of, but it reminds me very much of it. It's an Napoleonic game, and I can't recall the name of it. There's a lot of old classic games as well that I like this, which is really interesting. And so let's see here, then. We have tools. I like this. Shog, uh, shog, shog. I showed the fog of war there. Command info. And we actually do have them represented here on the map. Ah, oh, yes. Nice. Icons. Rangers. Let's see if I click on you. Ah, oh, yes. I'm liking that. Uh, we do have here the mixed muskets. Interesting. Uh, melee weapon. Uh, ammunition there. Melee is poor, covers none. Status is idle. Right, let's see. Situation. Hmm. Uh, first battle experience. This unit is in battle for the first time uh, ever. While its morale is capped, it may be increased by drilling the commander's leadership. Okay, that's really cool there. Uh, unit is cut off. Right. It is outside the influence of its commander. It's supported. Uh, one flank is protected by friendly units. That's really quite nice there. So, intact, well rested, but they're untrained and they're fresh. But we have 3,000 men there in that. Uh, is this considered a brigade? Yes, the 5th Brigade. Oh, we do have our actual main body down here then. So we have Bodyguard, we have Johnson down here. I'm very much liking that. Uh, Lean, McLean's Ford, uh, Mitchell's Ford, Blackburn. This is a really well done map. This is absolutely fantastic, actually. Oh, absolutely fantastic. Bull run over here. Right. I'm liking it, man. Uh, so let's go ahead and double check the actual mission statement again. Oh, so this over here, then. This is from headquarters, then. So, uh, consolidated overview report. I like the presentation. There's a lot of work that's gone into this. A whole hell of a lot of work. Uh, so, fighting spirits. Units obviously look pretty good there. Uh, rating? Tactical rating? Training? Oh, training. I couldn't read it there. 
and training. Obviously, we don't have as much training. And readiness is actually better, however. Intelligence gathering ranking, okay. Consolidated condition reports. Uh, men, horses, guns, provisions, forage, small arms, guns. Oh, right, for the... Uh, ah, I see, I see. For ammunition. And the Union does have more ammunition. That's going to make quite a considerable impact. So we see here our strength, so present for duty. Actually, no, we have less strength. Okay, fair enough. I thought we had more strength for this battle, actually. Uh, should have read that properly. <laughs> uh, but this is pretty cool. I'm liking it. So we do actually have here a rating of the commanders. So we have uh, bodyguards. We have McDowell. Fame. Leadership there. Initiative. Administration. Cunning. Ranking. Okay. Superb. Let's see. Uh, General Patterson, right. I like this. It'd be really great if I actually had a uh, like a greater degree of <laughs> knowledge of the battle here, as we have to give an idea of what we should be doing here. So General McDowell's army has continuous movement from Centreville, Centreville along Warrenton Turnpike. We head to Column, side to beyond Stonebridge. Let's go ahead and figure out where Stonebridge is. Uh, so we have the Warrington Turnpike over here. We have Stonebridge over here then. Okay, so that's Stonebridge. I wish you could actually have that highlighted. That'd be very nice. Uh, so we know where that is now. So, uh, Evans Brigade will hold the left flank in Stonebridge. With Cork, Coke, however you want to pronounce, um, say that, is sent to hold in Lewis, uh, Balls and Island Fords. Um, let's get rid of that. Get rid of that again for a second. So, Lewis Ford, Balls Ford, Island Ford. Right, okay. The rest of the army will continue preparations to attack McDowell's left flank from Blackburn Ford, where Longstreet repelled the Union demonstration. All reinforcements, ammunition supplies are to be moved hastily. Right, okay. So we're looking for Blackburn's Ford. Excuse me, which is over here. And we would attack the flank. Right, excellent. Ah, uh, let's see. I'm liking this so far. Very much liking this. So let's go ahead and take a look at things then. Ah, I like that. Very much like that. Let's see. Whoops. Uh, can I rotate? I do not believe I can right now. And let's see. So we do have over here then. Can I do it in battle? I'm not too sure. Uh, but we do have the Manassas Junction over here then. So I do have... I can't seem to rotate here for the time being. Uh, but we'll, we'll figure that one out. Uh, let's see, can I... must be like a way to rotate, but that's okay. So we do have the 4th Brigade over here, so we can see that range. Uh, we do have our artillery over here, then. Six pound of field guns. Okay, so, question comes down to, like, would we want to bring up any sort of, like, reserve like that? It's interesting that we even have it. Uh, we do have our horses over here, then. I'm liking this. Wow. Second Brigade. So we have McLean. Interesting. So the Battle of the Bull Run. And this is day one, so this could be a multi day affair. We've got Sunny over here. Uh, let's see then. Oh, we have something down here then. What are these? So build. Wow, what's this? Pressworks. What? Cool. Very, very cool. That is very awesome. I don't know if that'd be worthwhile. Uh, let's see. So we do have this actual hill over here. What happens then if I... I don't know what that's going to do, but sounds cool. Hmm. I could probably do a chain in... <laughs> change uh, the level of zoom. Sorry, the level of scroll. So formations we have here. We should tool tips to come up a little bit faster. Uh, infantry. Oh, I see. Long range. Lay down. Wow. Skirmishes, charge. Short range, medium range, long range. Commander. Allow initiative. I like that. Use cover. Uh, movement over here. Halt. Oh, sorry, stop. Uh, we have double time. We have that uh, double time. And that one, I don't know. Triple time, I guess. We have a ca uh, cannon over here, then. Artillery. Counter battery fire, bombardment, and limbering. Right now, they don't fire a will. Okay. Hmm. 
Okay, what we're going to do then is we're actually going to have the battle run here. And just so we can get a sense of what the game is actually like. I kind of, I really want to like rotate the camera, but I can't. <laughs> Maybe that's just how it is. Maybe I buggered something. Who knows? Alright, let's see. Whoops. Tools, right. So, we have begun here. Pull the speed up then. Very nice. Of course, the game's still in beta, by the way, so if there's any issues, then I imagine they probably will be resolved later. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, I'd love to see, like, a Napoleonic game like this. That would be amazing. God, I can imagine. Very impressive. What I'm going to do, then, is actually give it time. So, I would like to see what happens when we actually have combat. I'm not going to play the battle because I'm obviously not in a position to actually uh, <laughs> be any good at it. But I'm intrigued. So we do actually see Union forces over here. Right, they are in cover, however. Okay. We could seek to flank them over here, through the fort. Don't see them as of yet here. Well, what we're going to try and do then is, let's see, where are they heading out to? Brigadier Joseph E. Johnston. I don't know where he's heading, but he's heading somewhere. Is that where he's heading? I'm not too sure. Uh, Lillian Beaver. Right, okay. So let's see. We do have second brigade here. We do have some artillery over here. Uh, let's see their range. We could move the artillery to actually potentially engage the enemy. I do have some artillery over here, actually. They are pointed in this direction over by the river at Blackburn's Horde. I do have cannon here as well. So what we could potentially try to do then is, let's see, we do have uh, Hampton's Legion over here. So 654 men there. Uh, 2,000 men of this brigade. 2,000 men of this brigade. We do have artillery here as well, covering this here. Um, hmm. More artillery? Okay. Awesome. Uh, we have here then our commander. So we have Bodegard. Bodegard over there. So that's quite nice. I can actually take a look at all that. It shows quite a lot there. Impressive. Okay. What we'll attempt to do then is, let's see, how do we actually issue orders? So formation here. Square attack column. Single line. Have you placed into an attack column formation? So they form it very quickly. Now, let's see. I can order you over here then. So, move at the signal. Move at the time. Uh, the unit will prepare to move, but will await your signal to execute the order. Uh, move at the time. I like that. So they are now moving out, or at least they will be shortly. And then I confirm this. So, issue orders. Cool, I'm liking it. And we are issuing orders there. It's looking very good so far. It's looking very, very good. Very impressed so far. I'm sure you guys are as well, actually. Honestly, I wish I could actually play the game to superior uh, standard. <laughs> right, let's see. Right, so we are marching our forces over here, then. I'm not too sure when the game will actually be out, but I'm liking the look of it so far. So we're going to cross over here under this fort. I do not know if this is actually a held position. One would hope not. <laughs> so we can see that outside the influence range there. I also do have an X unit. Okay. So that's something that obviously does have to be taken into consideration. I do have a uh, brigade over here then. So we have 4th Brigade. Now, what I'd like to do then is approach the Brigade of the Union over there uh, with strength. But I suppose it comes down to a consideration of uh, at what point do you actually attack? Because if we're supposedly expecting uh, Union forces to be attempted to uh, make their way across like Stonebridge, uh, Lewis Ford, uh, Balls Ford, and etc., then uh, if we move preempt, well, if we move too early over here, it could actually spoil what could be a pretty impressive maneuver. 
and we'll see how things turn out. So, looks like I'm going to have to fold here, so it's not looking like a very great position for us. The troops don't have to move especially quickly. Can I have them um, marched? Yes, I can tell them to head there. I can actually give them multiple orders. So I'm going to cancel that order. Ah, I see. Um, right, I'd like you to try to cross over. So they should prepare to do that. And then they'll begin to uh, cross. Uh, let's see. Oh, I can actually choose how they deploy now. That's interesting. Cancel that. Yeah, so roads aren't exactly your best friends there. Okay, so what we'll do then is begin to move our sets up. So we do have the artillery over here. First brigade there. Um, okay. It'd be nice if I could actually keep the army in view for a little bit. like Kind of like here, if I could actually still see it all, that'd be nice. But I imagine that's probably done to actually prevent uh, performance issues. So Lewis Ford is taken. Right, okay. That's good to know. Excellent. So we have here then... When it loads? No, nope, guess not. Ah, not enough experience to select perk. That's intriguing. Could I have them open fire upon this brigade? So it looks like they need to move forward, so they'll move forward and then begin to open fire. Uh, what I'd like to do then is actually have the uh, brigade shifted to this position here if I can. I'm just testing things out here. This is not something I'd wish to especially do. I'd like to take that position over there to actually be in a position to flank the enemy. Uh, they're in column of attack, so they should find it a little bit easier to march, perhaps. Yes, okay, so we can see that our commander's over here. Oh, so that's his influence range. We could have him move forward. I, I think what we're going to do here... Oh, can I not select everything at once? Okay. Can I shift select? Can I alt select? Not too sure. Can I have... Let's see. Uh, assistance. Oh, AI stance. Okay. Oh, formation, infantry. Right, I see. Oh, we have... Oh, are these the orders being issued? Are uh, very, very possibly so. We are crossing the ford over here. I'm liking this so far. I'm liking it. I know I keep saying that, but it's actually genuinely impressive. Uh, you can definitely see that a lot of work has been put into this game to actually really, uh, really present something to fit the period. I'm liking it. I mean, the only issue so far... I, I mean, there's a little issues I'd like to see fixed. I mean, I'd like to have... Uh, a little bit more in the way of actual graphical options. It'd be nice to have a little bit more control there. Uh, little things like that. I do have the sounds quite low here, by the way. So if it does sound quiet, that's because obviously my settings there. Uh, so we do have a brigade farming up over here. Um, yeah, I'd like to be able to see the units from all distances, really. That'd be quite nice. But I suppose it adds to the actual feel here. You you aren't omnipresent. Right, they should be getting ready to cross over here. I've suddenly stopped, which is interesting. Now, the enemy is within range. I may have my forces in the way here. Uh, let's see. What we're going to do here, then. So, cancel that. Lay down, skirmishes, okay. Um... We'll have them... Um, I really want them in that formation. Let's see. Uh, I think we'll form up. Hmm. Let's see here. We have army orders. Interesting army orders. Ceasefire, retreat, surrender. Not good. We have order of battle over here. That's cool to see. Right, what I'll do then is have this formation move up over here then. Confirm that order. I'd like to have them open fire, but I'm not going to do that yet. 
I will have him cross uh, the river here. Right, just get moving. I'd like to see you in action. Our fellows over here are moving then. And so what we are going to do here is essentially assault uh, that brigade then from multiple um, angles, if we could. Uh, I would like to have Alter in position to support. Uh, let's see. Gonna have our sorry set up over here. I'm sure they'll be able to figure out their positioning. Can see messengers moving down the road there. Right, get yourselves get yourselves moving. So I wonder if this is our messengers. We are seeing messengers over here, but they must be messengers. I like that. I'm very impressed so far. Intriguing. So I do wonder then, do we actually need... So that must be like the uh, command delay then. And obviously because the orders have got to get there. Uh, yes, our army, our movement... Uh, sorry, our brigade is now moving. I do wonder if they can't see over here. Oh, we do see some Union artillery over here then. Okay. Right, well... Can I have you ordered to open fire? Where is their fire mode? They're currently on fire at will. Okay. Maybe they can't see them, to be honest. That would have been too surprising there, really. Right, okay. Artillery brought across the river is going to be especially useful. Okay. Have you moved into line formation? Yeah, so we'll finish this video then. We'll, um, we'll organize an attack on the enemy position over here then, and then we'll go from there. It would be rather interesting to see how we can actually do this. Uh, so we do have the ability to attack it from multiple directions. The issue is obviously the um, brigade support and artillery there. But that can be dealt with. Especially by attacking from multiple angles, that just uh, definitely helps us out. And I could obviously push up a sensor here, that would help. But they'll be moving out shortly. Okay. It'd be nice if there was like a way to see the position of everybody. Like in uh, the Total War games, you'd like hold down shift and you'd be able to see all the positions, like where everybody's going to be moving. Right, intriguing. Hmm. So we have our artillery crossing the fort over here, then that's good news. Yeah, we can see the guns here. They're not facing the correct direction right now. Obviously it would not take long before they actually do that. They have our artillery crossing over here, we have the brigade moving. Okay. So we're looking pretty good so far. Uh, what I could do then is obviously have our commander... Oh, so that moves up the remaining forces? Possibly. I wonder if it moves up everything within his influence range. That's interesting. And that's going to be going ahead there anyhow. Oh, so they're moving there. Oh, I see. So if I click on him, then I can actually see everything. There we go. That's good to see. Right, I want the cannon uh, to move into such a position as to where they can actually attack the enemy. Well, counter-battery fire would be nice, actually. Oh, are they f going to fire? Can they see from that position? I can't really tell. It looks like they're loading, so maybe. Uh, we do have our units moving forward. Okay. I might be able to actually move through here to attack the uh, enemy's uh, artillery, perhaps. Oh, they are firing. Yep, we have open fire. Oh, excellent. Fire upon the enemy. 
Right, moving in for the attack. Attack position. Right, better orders moving out there. I can see it moving. Oh, that's fantastic. Open fire if you can. They are firing too. Oh, we can actually see the cannonball. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm liking that so very much. Right, Ben. So we are within range here. We have better opening fire. Quite heavy losses there. Oh, 56 losses there. Well, let's see. Well, we'll have to wait for a new order there. So you can't just change orders in the midst of things. Right. Interesting. Long Street has been wounded. That's not good. Yeah, you can see the casualties mounting there. I'd say charge might go down well, perhaps. <laughs> I'm going to try things out here. We'll see how things go. Kind of opening up. Right, so they're opening up in our position over here. I mean, obviously we'd be able to win this. Uh, what I'd like to do then is actually have them form up. Like so, if I could. And then flank the enemy's position. Obviously, we could have done this in a much better way. I would prefer to have had multiple units firing. Like, we've only got the one unit firing here. So it's brigade and brigade, which is not exactly great. Uh, we do have our brigade over here, the second brigade moving up. So I can imagine we'd start to see more uh, Union Union forces in time. But that's very impressive so far. Oh, are they finally my position over here then? Well, the good news is we do have our Brigade moving over here. Second Brigade to engage the enemy. Right, orders come through there. They're forming up. And they're charging, I believe. We are taking casualties, but I deal with the able to push them off of the power valley land. <laughs> uh, As so we have our right, okay. So it's interesting to see that they've opened. Well, sorry, uh, improved their supported enemy behind cover. Okay. Yep, we do have our unit moving now. Unit is outflanked. That's good news then. I like how that actually works. It will soon get demoralized. Are they. Uh... Interesting. And this is it. This is really impressive so far. I know this is probably not the best video, but there's going to be tremendously better videos out there. But at least you get to see the the, the game as is. <laughs> Obviously, nothing's ever said here. Okay, looks like they are engaging me to some degree. Well, I don't need to double time it. I could have, but we're not doing that. I wanted them to move there. So they're facing the wrong direction now. Yeah, we're learning here. Right, what I want to do then is actually form up over this way. Yeah, so you can only have so many units in a certain space. I mean, that is obviously going to be um, quite obvious. Right. We've taken casualties over here, which is not exactly great. Uh, I'm not too totally sure what the enemy's position is like. So, units outflanked. Uh, in cover. We've only taken three losses so far. Interesting. And we do see Union forces over here then moving up. Fantastic. Yes, we are open fire upon the enemy. 
Oh, look at those fields. Oh, that is impressive, man. I'm liking that. This is a very, very impressive game so far. Very impressive game so far. Obviously, there are improvements that could be made, but I can definitely see where this game can and will go. I'm looking forward to actually trying to add to the future. Uh, but I'm most especially interested in the strategic element. That's really nice. Hmm. Right. I mean, the actual rate of fire <laughs> is going to get quite bloody quite quickly. So we do have here, uh, but equipped with the Mississippi rifle. That's interesting. Uh, caliber there, 0.5 inch. Sorry, 0.58 inch. Very, very cool. <laughs> Amazing. I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot. I mean, we do have... This is obviously not very well done. Because obviously we could have done this in a much better way. Um... Oh, they're broken, wow. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna assume that's coming from the actual <laughs> bombardment there. These guys are outflanked. So there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and call it about there, I think. We might go ahead and watch a little bit more of the battle uh, over this way, actually, because that's gonna be rather interesting to see what happens here. Like, we are in cover here. I mean, <laughs> the artillery is extraordinarily dangerous up close. You can imagine, obviously, one that. When you're on charge, you're that's pretty nasty. Uh, but yes, we've seen a little bit of how the game works. It's really intriguing to see the strategic element, but it's really interesting to actually see the uh, tactical element. But I love the fact that you do have options. I love the fact that the game begins the, uh, before the actual war, which is really fantastic. The open opening documentary was really well produced. There's a lot of things to like about the game. I'm very much going to be looking forward to seeing how General Tactician uh, continues to develop, really. I don't know if the game has multiplayer, but it'd be very cool if it did. Very impressive. I feel the Union will win here today because I am inept as a commander. <laughs> I'd have to learn how to play the game. I'd have to learn a little bit about the uh, history of the battles, actually, to understand what should be taken. But again, it explains it quite well. I like the actual little notes on the beginning of the letters. That's very good. Dispatch orders, whatever you want to call it. Orders in general. But there we go. So thank you for watching that, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've enjoyed this. It's been a, it's been a longer video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I could have broken up into three parts, but I thought, you know what, I might as well just show it to you. You guys get to take a look at it, and you get to actually make a uh, opinion on it yourselves. Uh, so if you have enjoyed this, do comment down below. Do let me know what you think down below as well. I appreciate I'm not the best person at this game. I've only just... And this is it. I've literally loaded up. I'm only playing it right now to show you guys. And I will probably take some time to actually learn how to play the game, and uh, go from there. I love how you have these over here, so low cohesion. That's really, really, very really nice. Uh, the enemy has not yet crossed across the ford. Interesting. There we go. I'd be very interested to see what you could do with the uh, Confederacy. <laughs> oh, so we did break the uh, brigade up here then, in the end. Yeah, it's just, uh, we'd have to probably order like a charge against the artillery there. I'm not seeing any cavalry, which is interesting. Yeah, they're broken, that's not very good. Uh, obviously do not do that. <laughs> Do not do that. Uh, so there we go. Thank you for watching there, ladies and gentlemen. If you have enjoyed the video, please do consider subscribing to the channel. be much appreciated. And if you have done that already, perhaps consider pledging a dollar a month on Patreon. That would be much appreciated. It definitely helps me out a bunch, and I shall see you in the future. Goodbye for now. I assume you and uh, Jane, sayonara. Until next time. Over and out.